The most famous Apollo mission was number 11. This was when Neil Armstrong took a small step for a person, but a giant leap for all humanity. But do you know how incredible the next mission was? I mean, Apollo 12. Each of such missions had its own purpose. The purpose of Apollo 11 was to show that humans could walk on the moon. The goal of the 12th mission was to show that we could not only land on the moon, but also make an accurate landing anywhere we wanted. The Apollo 12 spaceship was supposed to land next to an old robotic spacecraft that NASA had sent there a few years before. So, the Apollo 12 mission went well, and all the astronauts returned to Earth. But the most incredible part of this mission happened not in space, but in the first minute of flight. It all started on a cloudy morning of November 14, 1969, in Florida. The Saturn V spacecraft was waiting for launch at the Kennedy Space Center. It was a massive rocket with a height of a 40-story building. Its passengers were Charles Conrad, Alan Bean, and Richard Gordon. They had been training hard for several years to prepare themselves for this moment. All three astronauts woke up at 6 a.m., passed a medical examination, and boarded the ship. Then they began to check all the instruments, sensors, and indicators and compare them with the data of the command center. There were no problems. Cloudy weather couldn't interfere with the launch, so no one was worried about the rain. At 11.22, the countdown began. At 11.23, the engine started working. Huge pillars of fire burst out of the turbines, and the ship slowly rose. It flew through the gray clouds to its goal. At the 33rd second, Charles Conrad announced that the ship was starting to rise at an increasing speed. The headquarters in Houston received this message and replied something, but at that moment, there was a crack on the other side of the line. Something happened on board the Saturn V 36.5 seconds after launch. The ship's crew realized something was wrong when alarms lit up the control panel. It was strange because Saturn V was rising and the team felt no tremors or turbulence. Everything seemed great, only later, they realized that the ship had been struck by lightning at an altitude of 6,400 feet. Even though the first strike didn't create big problems, the second worsened the situation. As soon as the lightning struck again at the 52nd second, the ISS warning light on the panel lit up, which indicated the state of the inertial guidance system. It helps the ship understand its location, speed, and flight angle. Simply put, it's the way the ship feels its way around in the air. And that system broke down at an altitude of more than 14,000 feet. The headquarters in Houston and the crew of Saturn tried to figure out the problem. Still, the ship's electronics showed distorted data. There was a failure in the telemetry. This meant that the crew members and the staff on the ground couldn't fix the damaged electronics. Meanwhile, the ship's speed continued to increase. Imagine how the people on board felt at that moment. A giant rocket is flying at great speed further and farther away from Earth with a broken guidance system and faulty instruments. But the astronauts didn't panic. They knew how to behave in stressful situations. Saturn V reached its maximum dynamic pressure. This happened when the air resistance exerted the strongest load on the ship's hull. This moment is still considered one of the most dangerous during takeoff. Despite two lightning strikes, Saturn V was on its way. Meanwhile, the headquarters tried to keep the situation under control and closely monitored all indicators. The crew reported that everything was going according to plan, but it didn't seem convincing to the command center. They didn't know what was happening and what problems it would entail. The failure in the electronics concerned not only the inertial guidance system, but also damaged the power distribution systems. The command center couldn't see and control the condition of fuel tanks and batteries. In a sense, the crew and the command post were blind, and the ship rose higher and higher. No one knew what would happen when the ship entered outer space or landed on the moon. The whole mission was in danger. At this moment, engineer John Aaron came to the rescue. 
His attentiveness and ingenuity saved the entire mission and remained in the history of NASA forever. John operated a console that monitored the ship's electrical and life support systems. There were two screens in front of him, which displayed all the changes in the telemetry data in real time. 37 seconds after the launch, when the ship was struck by lightning, distorted data appeared on the screen. Imagine you're running and your smartwatch is monitoring your pulse and distance. Suddenly, instead of 150 beats per minute, the clock shows 1500, which is physically impossible. And instead of three miles, the device displays a few inches. So, John Aaron's screens showed the same meaningless and distorted data. But after looking at these random numbers, he found some strange patterns. John remembered that he had once seen something similar during the tests of the command module. Earlier, he watched the equipment that processed some signals. The details of this system are not important for the story. Still, John noticed that when the power dropped in that system, it showed numbers that were similar to those on the screens during the Saturn V flight. A lightning strike led to a short-term drop in power on the ship. But instead of zero values, the sensors and devices showed chaotic numbers. John contacted the chief in the command center and said he knew how to fix this problem. They contacted one of the crew members, Alan B, and said that there was a special switch with three positions in front of him, which was raised. It had to remain in this position throughout the mission to power the telecommunications equipment. John Aaron realized that to solve the failure problem, the errant systems needed to change the power supply. Alan Bean flipped the switch and switched the module to another source. At that moment, all the devices started working again. The command post in Houston was screaming with delight. The most important problem was solved. This is Apollo control. During the flight to the moon, the ship had other problems, but they were not so critical. As a result, the mission was completed successfully. Saturn V landed on the moon at the right point. The astronauts took soil samples from the surface and returned safely to Earth. After that, NASA astronauts went to the moon five more times. The last such mission was Apollo 17. On December 7, 1972, the 11th and 12th people visited the moon. After that, all Apollo missions were canceled. The first flight to the moon was supposed to cost about $7 billion. But during the preparation for the mission, the budget increased to $20 billion. It was too much money even for NASA. Walking on the lunar surface was a landmark task. Everyone was interested in a human stepping on Earth's satellite. But then, public support dropped. There was little interest in the following missions. In addition, traveling to the moon didn't bring any practical results. Since Apollo 11, scientists have received a sufficient amount of lunar soil. So what was the point of spending even more money? With rising inflation, the price of such a mission rose even more, and NASA began to invest in other projects. So, in the 70s, NASA had Skylab, the first controlled space station with a workshop and a scientific laboratory where many experiments were conducted. In the early 80s, NASA created the first space shuttle for multiple uses. The ship could repair satellites and return them to Earth or its orbit. And at the end of the 80s, the International Space Station appeared, and it's still successfully operating today. 